Welcome to Hello Self. It's a podcast focused on turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. I am your host, coach, and author, Patricia Leonard. Hello, Hello Self listeners. I'm so excited to have you here because I've got a guest that you're going to really learn a lot from and be excited about his interest in radio and online personality kind of work and just the things of the arts. He's very talented and he'll be sharing about his journey of Hello Self moments or nudges that said, Stanley Carr, it's time to go this way. Stanley Carr is my guest, and I am your Hello Self podcast host, Patricia Leonard. Stanley, you want to just say hello? Thank you for having me, Patricia. I appreciate the introduction, and it's actually an on-air personality, not online. I'm going to give them more of your bio in just a minute, okay? The way we're going to run this podcast is so you can follow along as a listener is my whole goal in this podcast is to turn your can'ts into cans and your dreams into plans. You know what? It's about time to get your wishes and goals and dreams off that someday shelf and start listening them listening to them now and start dreaming them now and that's the purpose of having guests on here to show you that they had dreams and goals and they finally decided to take them off that someday shelf and make them real so the way i'd like to start this podcast is just give you a little overview of who stanley carr is and then I'm going to turn it over to him to tell his own story. (laughs) So I'm taking some information from his bio that I think is pertinent for you to know. And then he can share whatever he wants to about his journey. When he started, when he really knew that this is the kind of work he wanted, when he moved to Indiana or or to Nashville or whatever he wants to tell you. So here we go as a little bit of background about Um, Stanley. First of all, Stanley is an online air personality announcer and producer. And I'm just giving you highlights. He'll tell you more about his journey and about his work. He's he likes helping people who enter enjoy entertainment and news because he has several shows that he shares other people's stories on there too, because he's done some podcasting. He does on-air broadcasting, announcing, editing, writing online script and copy. And he also mentors people, interest students particularly interested in writing and producing their own shows. He's done voiceover work for commercials. And I'm just going to turn it over to Stanley now. But one last thing I'd like to say about him is he says, my personal mission is to get the listeners as excited as I am about what goes into making music as well as who the artists are. So he likes the arts and helping those who listen to not only listen to the music, not only listen to the information he shares, but help you get to know the people who created those avenues. So right now, I'll let him tell you where he's working or whatever he wants to tell you about that. And I may even ask him some questions about his future endeavors from his own voice. Stanley Carr, take it from here. I'm so glad you're here with me today. And thank you for sharing with the audience. They may pick up some nuggets because I believe in every one story, there are many gifts and lots of glories. So here's Stanley Carr. Thank you, Patricia, for having me on. It means a lot. And uh, yeah, I was born in Nashville, Tennessee. I was born in 1995, April 1st, April Fool's baby. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, my dad and I share the same birthday, so... I was his 41st birthday present. Oh my Uh, gosh, that's great. I love it. (laughs) Yeah. So 
I spent the early parts of my childhood here and a good chunk of it up in Maryland and mm. Washington, D.C. I moved there when I was three with my parents. We had stayed in Maryland for about seven or eight years, and then we moved back when I was 10. So I spent a good chunk of my childhood years up there, and I moved back to Nashville when I was 10. I went to high school at Nashville School of the Arts, and uh, which was an amazing experience for me. I got to really learn a lot about life, culture, and meet all kinds of people. And so I, I was there for four years. I graduated from National School of the Arts in 2013. And I spent a year doing this certificate program at a community college before I transferred and uh, to another community college which is where I'm working now, actually. And uh, I fell in love with the uh, radio business after getting involved with the college radio station. And uh, yeah, my love for radio's just grown ever since. So the rest they say is history. Fantastic. What do you think really caused you to go in that direction? What was the nudge or the hello self moment that you could have from the arts, from the the high school you went to, you could have gone in a lot of directions from an art standpoint. Why do you think you chose an online personality role? First, I got to correct you again. It's on-air personality, not online. Now, there's some people that do a lot of online stuff, which part of that I'm doing too, but it's the job title is called on-air personality. What does that mean specifically? On-air means you're talking, whether it's radio or television, you're on camera or behind the microphone, and you are visible and are engaging to the public, the general Fantastic. public, which is what I'm doing. But to answer your question, I always knew I wanted to do something in entertainment ever since I was really young. I loved watching the news a lot growing up. I pretended at one point I was a weatherman. Oh, great. Or, or just an anchor. <laughs> yeah. But I did I did a little bit of film. I dabbled in that when I was really young. I did some acting. And I so I did a little bit of that. And I always knew I loved, enjoy, I enjoyed being in front of the camera as opposed to behind the camera. But I did, mm. but I went to, when I went to high school, I did some film stuff when I was in middle school, like some filmmaking clubs. I did that. And yes, that was a lot of fun. And, uh, but I, when I went to high school, they had a major at the time that since is no more called mass media. Ah, which uh, entailed film and television. And I auditioned because they had you to get in to National School of the Arts. You had to audition. You have to audition. Oh. So I auditioned with a film that I did and I got in. Did you write it and create? Did you write the film? Yeah. It was a behind the scenes look at my bar mitzvah. <laughs> oh my gosh. How fabulous. <laughs> yeah. So this was 2008 that I did this because yeah. that's when my bar mitzvah was. So I auditioned and I got it in 2009. I started in the fall of 2009 and I was taking film classes and I had, the, I had a really nice teacher who I learned a lot from that unfortunately passed away a couple of years after I had graduated, but he oh. was, I learned a lot from him. I also learned a lot from another professor, another teacher there that I was in his TV class. And he would take his class every year to Disney World to shoot a week of episodes there because he had a he had this like teen drama he was working on. It aired on a lot of some of the local stations, like one of the yes. local access stations in Nashville. So um, I got involved with that. But I think over time, I noticed that much like everything else, film is very competitive. And you have to really work at it to a certain extent. And I've heard it said from several people, like, to be a great filmmaker, you have to watch a lot of movies. Me being in school, studying a lot of stuff and taking classes and having tests and quizzes and NSA, having a lot of extracurricular activities, which I wanted to be a part of, but I couldn't yes. because I, a school that I attended, I I regretfully didn't have a chance to really do a lot 
of a lot of those things because I was so busy with school and that came first before anything else. Absolutely. I didn't have the time to really watch all the films that I wanted to because I was friends with a lot of people that really were committed, which I was too. They were like, like they had all the software, they had all the gear. And yes. I just didn't have the time to go out and shoot a bunch of stuff and... <laughs> But, well, you um, know what? That's funny because I think life happens and you're just pointing out something that's very key. You have to make choices in life, Stanley. Obviously, it wasn't anybody can go to a movie and watch a movie. You could sit there and watch movies. But what you did is you jumped in, did some work as you were going through your schooling. So you got experience. That's some of yeah, the most, uh, Yeah, yeah. And I graduated and I got involved with this certificate program, which was basically, it was a film crew program that I did at a college. And yes. I, I learned a lot there, but over time, I just, it was a year program. They were teaching you basically how to be on a film crew and etiquette and working on a set and whatnot. They they had us do like little projects and stuff, but I just... I real I realized I didn't think this was something I really wanted to do yes. because I I'm more of a creative person and not so much a a technician and again this is not to no. bash anybody or say I respect the work of technicians yes. I know that they are the ones that really do all the a lot of the work to make films and television look and sound as good as they do yeah it's a lot of work and it's a lot of hard work I'm not by any means knocking that whatsoever but I realized that I didn't really feel like I, I belonged and I really loved I was I, I really I didn't really think I really loved that kind of stuff at the time on the side I was I got asked to be involved with this play at at this community theater venue while I was doing this. So yes. I I got involved with that and I just knew that right away. That wasn't you know, true. I knew right away I enjoyed being more in front of the camera than behind the camera. And I, I felt, and again, I did a little bit of backtrack a little bit. I did a little bit of acting when I was in high school. I was in Hairspray. Musical Love called it. Hairspray. Yes. I played the role of Mr. Pinky, who was yes. the, yes. the fashion designer or somebody selling clothes. And it was a small role, but I enjoyed it. And so with this play that I took on when I was doing this program, I was this uh, this villain, but I enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun with it. And I get I ha someone at once asked me, like, why did you go into radio instead of going into acting? Yeah. And it's and I'm like, acting goes hand in hand with so many different things. It doesn't have to be just theater or film or it could be just broadcasting in gen general because you yes. are you are yes. a personality. You have gifts that you want to show people and. I just realized how much fun I had. At first, I wanted to do television, go into television, because this was like around the time, I think, they had some changes with late night television with Jay Leno leaving yes. The Tonight Show and Jimmy Fallon taking over. So I wanted to do that, and it looked pretty fun. And obviously, never say never to that, but I... I spent a year like really getting into hosting programming and I was actually attending the summer camp, this music camp, which you alluded to earlier in Franklin. And so the director of the camp noticed one night when I offered to MC one of the performances because I think somebody was busy with something else and they couldn't do it. So I stepped in. I just asked if I could do it because it looked so fun. She was like, yeah, go for it. And so... I did it and I just had so much fun with it. And so the next night, the next day, she had asked me, can you MC for us again? I'm like, <laughs> yeah, of course. Yes. So you know what, Stanley? Stanley, I saw that event that Stanley's talking about at Franklin, Tennessee. And I was so impressed with his ability to play music, to MC, to lead the event to just stand out as a leader. And I was so impressed because I got to attend that because I've known Stanley for quite some time. I met him when he was in high school, I believe Stanley, right? Or maybe even before that. But I've watched him 
But what he's describing right now, and I want to interject this, he's talking about, I tried this, and I began to discover where my where my personality fit better. That's what Hello Self is about. That's what this podcast is about. Is uh, And my book, Hello Self, which is on Amazon, I have to plug that. <laughs> but anyway, that's what my book and my podcast and my coaching and speaking career is all about. Discover first who you are or the world, the culture will put you in this role or that role and you'll never feel like that's not really me. And so what I love about Stanley and the work he does and the journey that he's been telling you about is that he he did some testing, if you will, stepping into different things so he could say, Stanley Carr, that's not you. And so he had a chance to get to know himself better. And that's why he's outstanding on what he's doing today as an on-air personality. So I just wanted to interject that, Stanley, because it really fits for my audiences to your process for discovering who you are as a man and the direction you want to go, because that's what is critical don't have any regrets in life oh, yeah thank, thank you. you thank you yeah. now i will throw in too my senior year of high school i i submitted a three three films that i short films that i did into the mid-south television awards for excellence and one of them ended up getting nominated and won so i was very excited we went to the ceremony 10 this was 10 years ago yes. and i was just I was so thrilled with that because it just showed me that anything I wanted to do, I could do it and something would happen. Hard work would pay off and it happened. And that's just, that was like a great point, Stanley, for my audiences, a very, you're giving so many fabulous points to help people on the other, uh, the listeners. Yeah. And you pointed out that, you just stepped in. You just go for it. And if you want to do it, step into it. Don't stay back and say, I couldn't do that. What no. have you got to lose by trying? I love what you're saying. Oh, my oh. goodness. Yeah. Th thank you. It's It just was about finding the right vehicle for me. You don't know unless you try different vehicles. Right. right? So I got into, did the certificate program. I did the play. I spent the next year doing taking some gen eds at that at the first college that I went to. And so I later transferred. I later transferred colleges and I started getting involved with the radio program. And so I just was we had a radio station and I got involved and I just was really like looking forward to doing shows every week. Like my first few shows, I was like, oh man. I got to work on this. I got to work this on this. I was it. listening to yeah. myself. So I was just really getting into it. And I just, and I grew up loving music. I, I grew up loving music as a kid, little kid. And so I knew so much about artists and bands. I've told people that for me, it was easier for me to listen to a three minute song than it was to watch a two hour movie, yes. which is why I feel like, which is why I feel like that the transition from film to radio broadcasting was just it was a natural progression. And I'll say this too, like I've realized that I had a knack for editing, which is, could be video or audio. So I'm not saying I'm definitely giving those things up, but I just realized that over time I knew what my vehicle was and what I wanted to shoot for, sort of speak. Yes. So I started really getting involved with the radio station and about a year later, I started The Piano Men, which is a show that I do on a community access radio station in Nashville. And uh, I've got it syndicated on about 20 or so radio stations across the country, but I've been doing that for about six or seven years now. And I've had the pleasure of interviewing people like Jim Brickman, pianist, John Tesh, Michael O'Mardian, who worked with Steely Dan and Christopher Cross, also a guy named David Sanchez, who was one of the early members of Bruce Springsteen's E Street Band. So, you know, talk about some heavy hitters there, and I hope to continue doing it. But I got involved with it, and I just was like, 
this is another thing I love to do. And I tried to, I started hustling, get it, getting it ready for syndication. And I, that's, that was something I really enjoyed doing. And so I, when the pandemic hit, like a lot of stuff stopped. It was, I couldn't really go into the radio station, but I, I was doing some stuff from home and it was Zoom definitely helped with interviews. So it was something I had to adjust to. And now I've got my own podcast, Wrestling With Heart, which I started last fall. I, I am a wrestling fan, big pro wrestling fan. So I, I attended WrestleMania last year and SummerSlam, this event called SummerSlam, which happened in, in Nashville. So I started this podcast, which is mainly talking with professional wrestlers who uh, help out in their communities, have done works of charity and community service. So uh, I'm looking to do something with that as well. And I've got, I've just heard back from some guests. So I'm hoping to grow that channel as well, get a following there too. Um, but it's just, there's ventures I'm looking at really doing, and I want to grow my own business. In a yes. As a matter of fact, I see do you see the steps that you've been taking to create where you are today? I'm, But you started with your own interest, which is what I really, and that's where everybody needs to start, not where somebody thinks they should. But with, did you have something you wanted to say to that? No, no, oh. you can continue. Yeah, but I think that's real important. And one other thing that you said in your bio is that you're helping other people besides all the podcast, the on-air broadcasting, and your piano man. There is no stopping you. It, But you also mentor students. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so currently I work for a community college where I got my start in radio. And so one of my jobs there is to help the new students that come through and help them get their start going, because I think it's good to give back and pay forward. Oh my and uh, that, when I think back to when I started, I learned a lot from my teachers and mentors. So I'm just trying to do the same thing and help them out and hope that they have the same kind of career aspirations as I have. Yes. I have. Had. And you, but at least by you working with them, you'll help them discover the hello self within them. What really is exciting to me. And so you help them find that. Yeah. I, and I think that the great thing about the broadcasting industry is you have what's called as the trifecta, which is like radio, television, and podcasting. You could have your mediums, your shows on all different platforms, all different yes. mediums. I'm I, That's why I'm not ruling out doing like tea or, or podcasting so much in terms of avenues. Obviously radio is number one, but I'm just trying to look at other ventures, other avenues as to where I can make a living and get get my foot in the door which is what I have right now but I'm hoping to just move up the ladder sort of right. speak. and I like what you're saying because in the radio you've got a audience a lot of times that is just sitting and listening and I do this a lot I think about you a lot as I'm driving because I'll be listening to and I pick up a lot of knowledge just like with your piano men show I I didn't know a lot about those people, even though I knew who they were, but you do that investigating and then you share. So you're helping people learn, you're entertaining them, you're giving them ideas about maybe you want to do this. So you're touching a lot of aspects of the world through your radio shows. Of course you would be with television too, but podcasting and radio is a is an audience that's there because they want to be or they've got they're still they're not doing everything else so i think those are the ones that really help people find out who they are because it's those moments that touch their heart yeah like the cool thing about it is when i talk to the people that i've talked to on both shows they're telling me their stories of how they got into yes. the business and they're just so humble. They're thankful. They're blessed to have had the careers that they've had because they wouldn't have they wouldn't be where they're at if it wasn't for the people that have gotten them there and the motivation and the hard work and the determination that they've put into whatever it is they're doing, whether it's music or wrestling. Yes. I just I am just trying to be the soundboard 
and help them tell their story so that it can help somebody else. Yes, because you encourage, you're an influencer, you're an educator. Do you see how you do all that by your shows? It's yeah, like I, yeah. It, I'm trying to be humble myself because I'm just starting out. So I'm just trying to guide guide them along and really make sure that they we have a good rapport and we have a good chemistry. And they can so ask that, questions. Yeah, yeah. So that so that yeah. they can okay. so that they so that the more people know about what I'm doing, they can help. They can help. They can help other people, and from there, just. That's how we can get stuff to grow and progress. And I love, because I think that everybody that has made it, a lot of times they become, they give back. And I love what you said is, it's my way of giving back to the industry, to individuals, to the world. And these mediums like podcasting and radio are growing by leaps and bounds, aren't they? They are. They definitely are. Yes. And so I'm just trying to reach as many people as I can yes. so more people know about it. And it's just about building the brand one step at a time. I just, I hope that people take something away from what I'm saying, what I'm doing. And if you just put your mind to it. Let um, me ask you, 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 you said something about building your brand. What do you think, and you may not have thought about this and it doesn't matter what you say, but what do you feel is your brand? Because I well, struggle with that myself. <laughs> first of all, I love playing music. And so that's what I want to keep doing as a as an on-air personality. But I also love talking to people. And I think interviewing people is a strength of mine yeah. that I want to continue and explore because I enjoy it. It seems fun. And I just like talking to people. So yeah. that definitely feels like it could be part of my brand. And so I'm just trying to, with social media marketing, try to get a YouTube channel started and get a Facebook page going and Instagram and all these other platforms and trying to spread the word. It's, it's And try to get your friends and family to share it because that's how it all starts. It yeah. starts with the roots. And so from there, you just have to work at it every day as much as you can, because that's how you're going to get somewhere. Yeah, it's so true. And I think as a young person, you are changing our society, the view of young people because of the impact you have made. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because sometimes yeah. we don't, we have a view that they're rebels, they don't stick with anything, that young people, that they've got these pie in the sky ideas, but they never do anything. But look at what you're doing. You are, br my brand for you is that you're touching every aspect of society, every <laughs> age, every, yeah. what I'm saying, with influencing, with information, with education, with and I like the fact that you want to be visible because to me, yes, it is important, but visibility can come on podcast, it can come on radio because people get an idea. I like his personality, or why do you watch that show? Because he educates me, or why do you listen to that? Because he educates me about. Yeah. So I think you're you're a brand that spreads across the whole younger generation and the older generation, because I am definitely older. <laughs> well, the cool thing about technology is that you're never too old to learn how to use it. And Great. I, I think as someone that's like on the borderline, like millennial Gen Z yes. generation angle there, I... I that's something I'm trying to learn. Like I, I've, I've often said to people, like I wasn't really born into a digital world. Yeah, I grew up with, I grew up with, I grew up like obviously with internet, but not necessarily at the rate that it is today with you have social media and your smartphones and all that stuff. I'm still trying to learn it myself. So I definitely over the last 10, 12 years, I've learned about Facebook and Instagram, Twitter, all these other things. I'm still wanting to learn more about it because that's how I'm going to grow my brand. 
Stanley, um, you're making me feel better because I didn't grow up with any of that. Oh, no. I'm yeah. Heavy. So we're all learners, aren't we? Because it's yeah. moving so quickly. It really is. I think back to, I remember when the iPod was a thing yes. first came out and I was like, man, I don't really, I don't really know how this works, but it's cool. <laughs> And yeah. I, I eventually got one and now you can listen to music on your phone. And it's just exactly. very interesting how technology changes within 10, 15 years. I just had a, I had a mix of everything growing up. It was physical yeah. media, digital media. I, my first phone, my first cell phone was a flip phone. So it my wasn't, gosh. it was not an iPhone. Oh, this, I did is not... gonna, this is going to be so fun. My brother up in Indiana, we teased him because <laughs> he's, I want to say a senior like me. And yeah. we teased him because he had that flip phone forever. And we said, <laughs> Michael, they don't have those anymore. <laughs> but they do. I know. You say yeah. that, he's going to love you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's crazy yeah. It, how it's really, how technology is rapidly changing over time. And you got all these new apps and stuff. And it's, man, I just, it's crazy how much yeah. it's changed. And you're part brilliant. of, we have to start to sort out, just like you did in your career, what are the ones that are impactful for me in my work, in my commitment to life, in my mission? I think that's, like you said, I want to get more on Facebook. I want to get more on Instagram. So you're making a decision about how you can use that and not just getting caught in everything because everybody else does. Yeah, because you go online nowadays with the last six or seven years and it's a mess. It, it is. is. Thank you. It's crazy. A lot of cyber bullying on the internet, a lot of hateful messages being spread around. And I just, I just try to use social media for good and stay positive because- Bravo. There's there's a lot of negativity out there in the world, and I feel like we need to put an end to it because there's things that I just feel like that have gone unnecessary. And I think that the more positive things we can do on social media, then maybe we can look at it and rethink it in a lot of ways. And that is you, for example. You are a positive thinker, a positive doer, a positive speaker. I love all the things that you're about. and more to come. I want to close this out now, but there's one thing that I, you've given so many great tips about getting to know who you are and what you want to do and stepping into it. Don't be afraid because you'll never know what you don't know till you get into it. You've given me and our listeners so many things to think about and you're young and you straddled these worlds that we lived in before all the fancy technology. And now you're in this new technology world. So you're giving us all no excuses thinking. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's a whole different world now with the internet and social media. So it's all about getting your name out there, market it. First, you have to have an idea. And I'm still trying to figure out how I can grow and make money and, you know, with all ah, the stuff that I want to do. That's so, a key thing because we have to, we can do fun stuff, but we have to be pragmatic about yeah. there's, there's a monetary thing that we yeah. have to think. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just going to take some time to get yeah. there, but that's a risk I'm willing to take because yeah. a lot of people now they're doing a lot of stuff at home or- yes. They're self-employed or they're ha they have their own yes. businesses. I Like I said, like there's so many things I'd love to do and want to do. I'm willing to make the work and put myself out there as best as I can. Yes. And you have demonstrated on this podcast and you've demonstrated in your own life that give me an opportunity to do these things and I will step into them because I can make them successful. And there is no doubt in my mind that you're not going to manifest what you're doing into the monetary needs that you have, no doubt. Is there anything you would like to say to your listen, to the listeners on this podcast before we go? Yeah, so you can find more about me at my website, which is Stan, S-T-A-N, car, K-A-R-R, -R, 
radio.com. I'm also on Facebook. I've got Facebook pages for The Piano Man with Stanley Carr. Just type in The Piano Man with Stanley Carr. Also, my Facebook page for Wrestling with Heart with Stanley Carr. Just type in Wrestling with Heart with Stanley Carr. And I'm on YouTube. You can find me there at The Piano Man or type in Wrestling with Heart. And you can find my channels there with my interviews. I've got stuff for my podcast, Wrestling with Heart, on Buzzsprout, on right. Spotify, on iHeart podcasts and uh, google podcasts and well, i'll have to work on getting it on apple but that's a project i'm gonna i'm gonna work on soon but um, yeah i've got some guests lined up for that trying to get some guests lined up for piano men and yeah i just would love to be syndicated eventually nationally and uh, just love to be an on-air personality and if anybody's listening that you have those kind of opportunities that he's talking about don't forget to connect with him because in this podcast, when the when we put it on uh, line or on YouTube and Radio X Nashville, that will be out there and it'll go to Spotify and all those that he's mentioned too. And don't forget to connect with him if you've got an opportunity that you think Stanley would fit in to or you're planning something for the future on your broadcasting, keep him in mind and just sit down and talk to him about it or give him a contact or give him a, or connect with him on one of those mediums that he just has told you because he can add value to your business simply from number one, who he is, and number two, the knowledge he has. I'm so happy to have you, and I know our guests are saying, wow, if this young man can do it, I can. And you know what? We'll have to make a pact that five to seven years from now, if I'm still doing this, we'll have another one and we'll have a follow-up. You know, right. I think it's interesting. Like I mentioned initially, I've known Stanley for a number of years. But you know what? I didn't really know Stanley until today as he starts to share his story and his journey and his choices he had to make. And this is the truth about everybody in life. Hello Self is so important, not only to the individual, but to the people that can support the individuals. Did you have something else you wanted to say, Stanley? Oh, no. Oh, okay. Just saying so, thank you. Yeah. Just saying well, thank you. Just thank you for uh, for having me on, Patricia. And uh, you know where to find me. Yes. And that's what he says to everybody. You know where to find him now. And I am so grateful that he said I'll be willing to be on your podcast. So I just want, in closing, I want to say to all of you listeners that Hello Self Podcast is for you and my guests are here to help you take that next step and get your dreams and goals off that someday shelf. Again, I'd like to say thank you for being here. I am your host, Patricia Leonard. And remember, I always say, Keep dreaming and living those dreams. Thank you for joining Hello Self today. And may it offer insight and inspire you to stay on your runway to success. Like, share, and subscribe. And remember this, keep dreaming. Keep dreaming.